The first thing that I would suggest is that you try to adopt a conversational tone, much like how I'm talking to you on the film today. And I learned that the hard way. The hard way being that I taught my students in large biology lectures of 95 students the way I was taught, which was very formal, very together, very organized, and very serious. I didn't crack a smile, but I really gave a very beautiful presentation. My students didn't respond very well to that in terms of what they scored in their end of the semester evaluations. And when I instead decided that I would pretend that I was talking to a colleague who I really, really liked talking to about biology, my tone completely changed. I was conversational, I told jokes, I was relaxed, I thought about things that were really exciting and that came across to the students. So that's number one. Number two is something I learned from an older colleague, which was to try to distill my message to three or fewer points. That is, I would start with that in the outline in the beginning of the course, in the beginning of the lecture, and then at the end wrap up with those. And that doesn't mean that the details weren't important, but sometimes they really weren't. How I got to those major points was what wasn't important, the major points were important. So could I do that in 50 minutes? And if I could get those messages across, then the students really learned something. I also learned from a senior colleague the importance of giving the students a break midway through the class. It could be 30 seconds. If you're teaching a 50 minute class, how about a 30 second break? Now, you might think, oh, I don't have time to do that because I've got so much to cover. But this was told me by an expert lecturer who had the reputation of telling jokes and stories and all these things. So I said to him, Frank, what is this? How do you find all these jokes and stories? And he said, Wendy, that's not it at all. It's really about just giving a time break. You can tell announcements, you can tell a story or a joke, but it's just about giving the students a chance to shift their brains. In that 30 seconds, they will have unconsciously processed something that you were just talking about. And when you now return to the class and you say, we were just talking about X, Y, Z, does anyone have any questions about that? The amount of student participation was noticeably bigger. And so that's a, a tactic that I've always taken and I find that it works really well. So you'll see students will actually physically move in that break and that's really terrific. A final point which I think others will address in this series is to talk about or think about designing small problems that students can do in a large lecture setting where they're interacting with their neighbors. So a yes or no question, a multiple choice question, they, have to, they could vote beforehand with clickers and then you ask them to talk to their neighbors, convince each other about the correct answer and then take a vote at the end. You can get amazing results out of that and then you've got students really interacting with one another to learn. So finally I just wanted to say for those of us who are really interested in issues about racial inclusion at traditionally white institutions like the one I'm at, Williams College, a tactic that's really worked well for me in terms of building trust early in the semester is to think about color. Color won't identify for me everybody who's from an underrepresented group. It won't identify people who are first in their family to go to college. But it does identify groups that have been traditionally not represented at such institutions. And so I see color in my class. I'm white. I think it's important for me to acknowledge that I'm going to have a harder time building trust with my students of color. So I learn their names early. I interact with them early in the class. And I think this really leads to an environment where everybody knows that they're invited to learn in my biology courses.